I can't quite contain or explain my evil ways. Well, 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 welcome back to the channel, everybody. Ender Hot here, back with new videos, fan fiction readings, and pff, what am I talking about? I'm crazy. Well, um, most of you know I haven't done a Cypher Secret video since pff, October. Because, <laughs> um, a video to that will be. I'm working on it, but a video explaining that will be uploaded later, probably tomorrow, because I'm going to be doing this one late at night because. Pff, it's late at night. But, um, explanation. I'm very sorry. I am a slacker. <laughs> that's the only thing I have to say. And that's the only thing I'm going to do so far. So, let's get right on it, shall we? I hope my microphone is better this time. Boop, boop. Ba boop. Okay. <clears throat> we are back with Cypher Secret episode. Sorry. Chapter 19, um, I think it's episode 23, we'll be doing a chapter each episode, so let's get right on it everybody, <whistles> I'm making sound effects, okay, so what do we do now, they were already inside the library, checking every possible book, however, their task, task would be more difficult than ever with hundreds of books to be checked, Dana wasn't even bought wasn't even bothering looking inside the books. She just checked the cover and then put them back to the shelf. Actually, it sounded more like throwing them. Daniel <coughs> Daniel was checking every book that Dana left behind, and Azaf was doing the same thing with other books. Finally, the red-haired female twin groaned as she checked the 15th book, letting it fall to the floor in frustration. Guys, let's face it. Dana was not the only one shouting now because the library, because that was a library and she didn't want to be shushed again. So she kept it in a normal voice tone. It's going to be hard to find it if we have to read every book of the town. Why don't we just search for another clue? Or maybe we could grab some kids and force them to be our minions. Yeah, that could work. Daniel and Azaf rolled, rolled their eyes. <sighs> That's not just... A stupid hunt, Dana. As I've said, trying to reason with her. <clears throat> this may lead us to many secrets, you know? There might be big things inside. The riddle, we have... We have many... We ha may even discover something astonishing. Like breaking through a discovery on a par with a pencil and... The second law of the Thermodicians, or the discovery of fire, we can surpass the great important sp people in history like Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton, and Benjamin Franklin. Can't you see that? He smirked at his own thoughts. We might as well also be find a Mesoamerican gold or rare pirate treasures, putting our own government and the big incorporates of the doghouse. I'd like you to translate that for me because I understood nothing. None. Zero. Zitch. Nada. Dana depanded, depanned, crossing her arms and leaning against the nearby wall. As I grin faded as he turned to a frown. You know what? Never mind. Just give me that goddamn paper and I'll, and I'll check somewhere else because I'm very clever. Clever. Daniel said and grinned at his sister's selfishness and pride. Of course you are. He quoted, rolling his eyes. You just don't use that brain of yours, which explains why it's rotting. D Dana also also rolled her eyes and elbowed him playfully. Then he did it as well, as I've sighed and handed Dana the paper. She grabbed it from his hands and started reading. Hmm, nothing here makes sense. Wait! She pointed at the fifth paragraph. This time... Hmm. This time, Daniel and Azaf approached her to take a closer look. Dan... Doesn't this little phrase sound a little familiar? Daniel narrowed his eyes at the paragraph before his eyes widened. He snapped his fingers, realization hitting him hard. Of course he should have noticed. His sister, who isn't exactly the smartest person in the world, world had noticed it. How, how had he been so dumb at this point and missed such a simple thing? Of course it does, as a, he answered simply. That was Vladimir Lenin's catchphrase, was it not? That's because he used both capitalism and socialism during his 
his government, right? Dana shrugged. I kind of snoozed on that part, but if you say so, Daniel and Azza face palm. It's because our history book cover has this title, so I think we have to find a book about Ger Germany's history, right? Daniel and Azza both double face palmed because just one face palm wasn't enough to demonstrate their frustration when Dana said Germany. The little red haired til tilted her head to the side, wondering what she had done wrong. What is it? Is there something wrong with my teeth? Lenin is from Russia, Dana. From Russia, her twin said before shouting and then being shushed by lots of people who were near him, trying to focus on their books. Daniel rolled his eyes and crossed his arms. It's going to take forever to find a book about Russia's backstory here, but we have to try. Let's go. The three nodded at to each other before going in different directions. <coughs> As I've scanned the whole shelf before his eyes stopped on a book that said, one step forward, two steps back. Lenin's life. Without hesitating, Azaf grabbed it from the shelf rather roughly and went back to their meeting point. He he opened the book carefully, passing his eyes th through the dirty and dusty pages, trying to find anything. <clears throat> Finally, he turned to the last page. One piece of paper fell from the book into the floor. Azaf kneeled down to grab it. The writing, just like before, was blurry, but he managed to read it anyway. The forest is the key. Don't underestimate him. Huh. Ah, you found something, a fenomen, a fenomen voice said, making Azav get up and jolt and turn around just to see Ser the Sarid twin standing next to him. He almost sighed in relief, but prevented himself from doing so. What is this? It was Dana, who was now peeking from behind his shoulder, trying to get a better view of the paper. What does it say? Azav looked at her and then at the paper again. It says, the forest is key. Don't underestimate him. The three exchanged glances for a few seconds before Azaf closed the book, putting putting it back on the shelf. It was previously, where it was pre previously, as he put the paper inside of his pocket. Along with the other one. Okay. Then we are going to the forest. We'll try to discover what that the second part means later. Deanna smirked while Daniel was growing worried. Let's go. The three passed through the f library door and were now headed to the forest where they had been before. Meanwhile, the creature that was once watching them it was now observing them from another tree's branch. You will soon feel what I've felt, Cypher. I think we're lost. We're not lost. Oops, sorry. Where are we anyway? Dana, shut up. Do you guys have a map or something? I have a compass right here, and we're going no north. Now shut up. Feels like south to me. Can you just? We're totally lost. Can you two shut the hell up? Azif was already feeling a headache coming, especially because Dana was getting on his nerves right now. Upon hearing a shout, the twins immediately fell silent. Danielle, ignoring the previous lecture, looked down at the compass. Dana rolled her eyes until she tripped on something, falling down on the floor with a thud and face first. Ouch! Heck! What is every bad thing in this world has to happen to me? She complained while, Az while standing up with Azaf's help. Can it? Wait, sorry. That's called karma, dearest sister. As I've said, his voice filled with irony, gr grinning. Can it? Dana ordered. <coughs> as I've as ignore, ignoring the two idiots arguing behind him, kneeled down to analyze what Dana had bumped up into. It was some sort of lever. As I thought, well, before doing anything, what would lead to the end? Of, would it lead? Would that lead to the end of the world? Was he willing to probably risk humanity's safety just for a hunt? The black-haired boy had leaned on his mother, leaned from his mother to always think of his actions, consequences before doing anything that could have bad or good consequences. He had also learned that from his mentor, Kinesi, but in a deeper way. I think you should get out more, Daniel. Dana suggested with a smile. We used to stay inside our house every day, but now we're actually having some fun. And we're out, right? Every time we go to town, people give us strange looks, like we're outcasts or something. I think they, hey look, these twins are living, the, hey look at these twins living in that strange house. I didn't even know they existed, and things like that. Daniel crossed his arms as he put the compass inside of his jacket pocket. I agree, but sometimes you cross a line. Dana smirked at the statement, mainly because it was true. 
The red-haired boy soon ignored his sister and turned to his friend who was kneeling down and checking something. Azaf, what are you doing? Azaf, upon hearing his friend, stood up and turned to the twins, pointed to the floor where the hidden lever was. Dana raised an eyebrow upon lay laying her eyes on the thing, especially because she had not seen it there. There's a lever there. I think it's our next clue, he explained. The twins nodded, analyzing it carefully. The, lev the lever's color, which was light brown, matched with the ground's color and was probably why Dana hadn't noticed it there in the first place. The red-haired female twin felt relieved upon knowing it wasn't her fault, more or less. Should I pull it or something? Azaf asked for their opinion if it was safe or not to pull the lever. Dana didn't seem to have understood his question, or pretended she didn't, as usual. Of course you shouldn't pull it, you nitwit. Don't you know modern levers are made to be kicked? Like this, and without any previous warnings, she lunged to the lever and kicked it as hard as she could. As I've heard the sound of some cracking, he though he didn't know if that was the lever <laughs> or that he had been kicked or Dana's feet bones. And then, after the crackling sound, the ground started to tremble underneath them. Congratulations, Einstein. You caused an earthquake. Daniel commented sarcastically as he tried to keep his balance. Dana shrugged. It was worth it. As if, as if still ignoring these two for his sanity, tried to stand up, but the earthquake got stronger and made him fall to the floor again, forcing him to stay there. Daniel and Dana were also fell to the floor after losing their balance. The three were completely hopeless and confused now. What the heck is happening? Is the universe splitting in two? Dana said after being quiet for three minutes, listening to the sound of everything underneath them trembling. Suddenly, the ground under them started splitting in two, separating Dania, Dana from Daniel and Azaf. She instinctively knew that this would end up badly and lunged at them, jumping and falling right on Azaf, who didn't even say a word, and threw her to the side. He had more important things to do worry about now. Okay, I'll shut up now. <coughs> However, as soon as she said that, some sort of brick wall started rising from under the ground that had split in two. The wall kept rising until it was five meet until it was five meters tall. After that, the <coughs> after that, the ground and the whole world stopped trembling. An earthquake hadn't happened after all. It was a traumatizing experience for the three preteens who were now paralyzed and. In front of some magic brick wall. Okay, I'm going first. What the heck? Daniel yelled, breaking the silence. Whoa, I've never seen something like that. As I've said, standing up. The twins The twins mimicked his action. The black-haired teen smiled upon gazing the large, tall, yellow brick-made wall. It was such an eye Andy knowing they were finally getting clues. Even if one of his colleagues almost ripped the entire world apart. The entire town apart, which made him wonder if someone else felt the earthquake or just them. I'm impressed. Dana's lack of common sense did serve for something, after all. Dana smacked him on the back of the head, her face clearly showing how amused she was. <laughs> I'm not just shoving you to the ground and forcing you to eat sand and mud because I'm too traumatized to express my sentimentals with words and, and violence right now, she retorted. Daniel, on the other side, didn't even know what to say. He was speechless. But the excitement of the new of a new adventure and the curiosity made him want to find out what made what made the wall so special that it was buried under the ground. So ooh. stupid pop ups. So what do we do now? Stare at the thing all day like it's some kind of modern art we don't understand, but just pretend we do so people won't judge us? Of course not, Dana. We can't be di dietary right now, Azaf retorted. Dana ignored the wall to muse about the meaning of the word dietary. The leader stepped ahead and extended his hand to touch the wall. It didn't move, and nothing happened at all. Hmm, Azaf thought, humming to himself. I think there's some sort kind of secret code that... We have to say out loud to make it open. Like in Al Alba and the Forty Thieves or something. Dana smirked. Now that was something she enjoyed. I am the master of the secret code. Step behind and watch me decode this easily, she said proudly. Alakazam! 
and nothing happened because what Dana just said was plainly stupid. As I facepalmed, as well as Danielle, but the red hair decided to join a sister game because either way, it would lead them to another one. Hmm. Abracadabra! Shazam! Open us, Wallace! Is that wall seriously not going to move? I think I know, Dana exclaimed as she took one step forward, her nose almost touching the wall. She closed her eyes. <laughs> the password is... She paused dramatically. Password! And the wall doesn't even move. What? <clears throat> oh, I lost my spot. And the wall doesn't even move. If it had a face, it would be laughing at them right now. As I've double face palmed. Aw, man! Dana snapped her fingers. She was sure that this would work. As I've kept both of his hands in his face, covering his eyes so they wouldn't burn in shame and disagree because, seriously, why would he even hang out with these guys? Daniel seemed to have an idea after his sister said that. Here, let me try, he said as he stepped forward closer to the wall like his sister did. He paused dramatically as well. Password one! And the wall didn't move. Finally, something inside Azaf snapped as he pulled the twins by the hair, forcing eye contact. They weren't even taking the mission seriously. He would expect that from Dana, since she literally kicked almost and almost broke a lever, but not from the normal-looking twin Daniel. You two are idiots, you know that? The two exchanged confused glasses. Azaf was taking that too seriously. Azaf was taking that too seriously and was now about to have a girly fit. And that and that happened frequently because he all, always took things too seriously. In that moment, the twins shared the same thought. This guy needs to relax right now. This is a secret passageway that lead us to the biggest secrets of our lives or even the universe. It's not it's not like it'll open when you say open sesame. After that, the ground under them started trembling again. This time not with the same strength as previously. And the wall opened. As F stared with wide eyes before double face palming. I'm so done, he murmured. Dana rolled his eyes. I feel that the person who is in charge of the secretness of this code will be fired soon. Ha! <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> uh, that was chapter 19. Uh, we'll do more uh, tomorrow. And I hope... And that's it for this video, everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed. And I'll see you all on the flip side. Bye-bye!